<laughs> you can find me at Sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so focusing in on the last two bands coming up from Bleed and Asterisk, we see Moskov as well as Kerry being banned out for Bleed. Securing the Gold later makes perfect sense earlier on. So thus, we see Gold Lane focused bands coming out from the side of Bleed. For Asterisk, we see the Paquito as well as the Hellcurt, a little bit of a nod uh, towards uh, the side of Gear with the Hellcurt ban. Uh, seeing that he's probably, I think, one of the only one, if not two, people that play Hellcurt uh, during the final week of the regular season. Uh, and we see Lee slotting in Arlet, as well as Yi coming out for J uh, for Bleed. Uh, and on the side for Astros, we see the Claude being slotted in, and they have got, I guess, the Rome that's left open right now. Okay, uh, I always find the Yeev kind of funny. I, it's not in the greatest spot. I think we've seen the, even the power of the Farza even earlier today. So, like, why would you limit yourself here? And, and, and you know, the rule of manipulation, the box is much smaller. It seems like it's not the most ideal pick, especially, again, with the Farza still open. Yeah, not to mention, right? I mean, the thing is that usually with Yeev, they want... Uh, some form of crowd control, some form mm. of CC that allows them to group something together. Uh, pairing Yi with something like the Yuzong may actually yeah, yeah. be pretty good, right? Because you can kind of uh, group up and, and herd the enemy team in a circle. And then when Yi uses the real world manipulation, mm. uh, she's able to then maximize damage that she outputs from there. We do see the Minotaur being locked in for Asterisk, which I was about to say would be good for the side of Bleed, right? Minotaur, um, you know, and Fury together, real world manipulation. It's disgusting. You can't be like, after they make the pick, you'll be like, ah, oh, yeah, I was, you know, thinking that. Like, no, you're too late, man. Now, I was, was going to say that it's good for Bleed. So Bleed not picking okay, that okay, up, okay, right? It's okay. actually going to be super detrimental. It's because you're trying to make like, oh, like this portent, but you call it after they pick, made the pick? That's not helpful. Hey, um, I mean, look, it's just shows that I'm in sync together with the teams today, boys. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to head straight into match six, guys. This is the first game of the lower uh, bracket quarterfinals. Bleed versus Asterisk, lads. Uh, there's, once again, a little bit of beef going on between these two teams. Asterisk lost the last time around they faced Bleed. We're going to see if they have something to say about that today. All right, guys. Once again, we're always going to start off with the general question. Who has the easier matchup to play? Or oh, team composition to play? Uh, probably Asterisk for me. I'll probably call it for Asterisk. They do, they, they do have a pretty much a plug and play kind of composition. Their initial three, their core three being the Fredrin, Xbox, and Valentina, pretty much just fit, uh, fit them in any kind of uh, lineups pretty easily. Putting a Claude and a Minotaur in just basically suggests death ball, and they will be able to definitely do that if they um, they have a friend in as well. If they want to do a little bit of a pick off, they can definitely do that. Oh as well. wow! Wow. Okay, not something that we were expecting, but that is definitely a first blood that is going over to the hands of Asterisk. That was really, really quick. I'd love to see a quick replay as to what happened over there, but it seemed like uh, a bit of a skirmish was happening up top, uh, trying to get, I think, Kiwi some uh, some space because I saw just now that Jay was actually being able to push Kiwi into his lane underneath the turret, was not able, uh, so we didn't give Kiwi enough space, but farm the creeps underneath uh, the turret. Okay, if we're gonna talk about this bottom, the gold laner right here, right? Seiji versus uh, uh, sorry, uh, Chu. Who are you giving the edge to in, in terms Seiji. of the game? Sorry? Seiji. Seiji. 100% Seiji. Because the thing is that we saw... Ooh, that's a lot of damage. We saw just now actually a little bit of a sneak preview of this uh, matchup, right? When we saw RSG uh, fighting against uh, NIP Flash. NIP Flash at the time playing the Claude. And uh, I think CS was on the Roger. Roger was actually uh, dominating Claude in lane. Uh, and... Banix was actually a little bit behind and those only have A little bit tight top lane, does seem like we have three men jump in coming from the side of the fleet, wanting to get a kill down on the bear. With Yon being in the front lines and here actually becoming in as well. This four-man team from Bleed, unfortunately, did not manage to reap any rewards. Yeah, it was a pretty sizable... Okay, what they were trying to Bleed was trying to go for the gank in the top lane. They had four members. It's a pretty sizable commitment. But again, Bear is on the export. Uh, you had that Faraga armor so that you had that get-out-of-jail-free oh, card. Oh, no. But... The final slash. The flicker final slash did not manage to land on anyone. 
one to hit. Subsequently, take down the turtle as well as Arlen himself. Yon now taking a quick little back home trip, but it doesn't seem like he will be able to do that as we do have the Earth Shatter connecting onto him, bringing him down and leaving Gear currently in his Primal Wrath form, unable to do anything without Phylax, but immediately resummoning Phylax to make sure that he have got all the defenses he need. Oh, Sagit so knew with the air ball in that final slash, completely whiffs out, then he gets killed. That was uh, probably not exactly a highlight, but like a low light at that point, kind of. A, a, a high low light, maybe? A high low light. <laughs> <laughs> not but, the greatest. But again, Asterisk up 3-0. This is kind of what we expected out of Asterisk, or at least I did, because I've been ooh. on this train since. You guys have been, you know, on and off. Uh, but, you know, the bandwagon goes real slow, so you can, you know, get on and off whenever you want, right? That is uh, true, but I'm still <laughs> confident in uh, the Bleed boys right now. We see 1.4k gold lead to Asterisk. Uh, that's actually pretty significant considering it that is. we're only um, three and a half minutes into the game. Honestly, Bleed um, not really looking like uh, the complete team that I know and love. Um, so a little bit concerning going into game one, but keep in mind this is the first game of the series and things can still be happening. A big jump onto FMM, but it's all just a quick little poke onto the members of Asterisk. Bleed have not much of an intention, but really just to bring down FMM's HP just by tap it. Yeah, yeah, still very early. I mean, they're just kind of feeling each other out. Where are the weaknesses, right? You have another 30 more seconds before the turtle is up. This is kind of like, like a moment of, can I get a pickoff, hopefully in time? I mean, the 20 seconds is still going to be there. You know, JH is spending a lot of time just looking for that potential pickoff. Here comes Jan. But it doesn't seem like they meant to connect with anyone just yet. JH has really been making up, uh, putting his time down at the bottom quite a bit. But it's not as bad as compared to Yon because Yon is currently still at level 6. In fact, JH is one full level in front of Yon. Uh, of Yon. So this is actually not going to be very good for B to take on this team fight. But Bleed doesn't have a choice, right? The thing is that if Bleed gives this turtle free, they can't handshake anything else on the map. Right now, top lane is open, but Bleed is not is often to choose for this fight. They want to contest. But it doesn't seem like they will be able to land anything when it comes down to the RWM. The Gitnu jumps himself on the Kiwi. The final rep is going to be activated. They were all going to be focusing oh, on the Gitnu with a four, with a three-man Minoan's Fury, followed by a skill one from FMM continues onwards. That managed to knock three on top of that. This pushes Bleed all the way back and getting one kill on the Gitnu and in turn also getting the turtle for themselves. What is Bleed doing? I mean, they literally popped two ultimates before the fight even started. They did not have many, as many ultimates as Asterisk um, going into the turtle fight. And oh, look at this. HP, not looking good. Two oh. with the PDMI. Tries to get him running himself away, but Gear expanded a flicker just to ensure that he will be able to avenge for Seiji. I mean, if they didn't get the kill, it's, it's a one for no trade, right? So at least a flicker was expanded and a kill was procured at the end of the day. But are they pushing in too much? We see FMM and Kiwi kind of going up to the top, but it seems like nothing's going to be happening here on. Yeah, I mean, the kills are all going Asterisk's way, but taking that top T1 definitely provides a lot of space, right? Getting the objective. Uh, the 1K net worth lead isn't the end of the world, especially at this stage. There's a lot, but the final slash? Doesn't seem like he's going to go under the turret for an extended period of time. But he did manage to take a couple of shots. With a quick little dash out of the way as well as a retribution, slow Seiji just enough to ensure that he will be able to get right out of harm's way. Keep in mind that this is Sagitnu on one of his signature champions. This is one of his signature heroes, right? Mm -hmm. Arlot is, can be played by both Gear as well as Sagitnu. But honestly, the performance that I've seen this game uh, on the Arlot with Sagitnu it does not seem very promising, honestly. It feels like something is missing from this bleed that I know. Okay. Right? They seem okay. a little bit out of shape at this point. What do you think is that missing piece? Mental. Mental. Okay. Uh, okay. I mean, in, in my opinion, right? Like, Sagitnu okay. is making some plays which I haven't seen him do all regular season, right? He's doing missing his final slashes. Mm. He's not committing to it. Uh, and when he does commit to it, he's committing at the wrong time. His team isn't even close to him so far. Right. It, it, I feel like this is a like a breakup about to happen. You're like, oh, you changed, not me. But I don't know what's changed about Bleed exactly, right? There's like one of those <laughs> weird awkward <laughs> But uh, onwards. It really feels as though there is a lot of pressure onto the side of Bleed. I'm not too sure exactly what that pressure is, but maybe the thought of losing the entirety of MPL SG Season 7 has gotten to their heads. They're getting this, they're starting to look a little bit uh, feisty and a little bit. Ooh, um, JH! 
Wait, did you hear Jackson take he, it? He oh stole my it. god! He stole it! Absolutely disgusting! And I'm talking about that, it does seem like Bleed is not happy about the steal. They all went forward for J to JH and drop him all the way down to 30% HP. But quickly after that, JH managed to get away. Barrett uses the, uh, expanded all his Viraga armor and got himself away. Well, but look at that, right? Saginu used the final slash, and honestly speaking, that was a good final slash, but the rest of the team were not there to follow up. Guys, it seems like Bleed is just not communicating. Yeah, we're gonna have to find out, but it looks like there's a bit of a skirmish in the mid lane here. With a quick little initiation on to gear and follow on through words with a four-man knockout coming from FMM. They're going to be diving down on the turret. Yon is hoping that he'll be able to stay alive for a little while longer. And JH with that praise of Wrath just gonna be landing on top of Yon. But unfortunately, just leaving with a tad little bit of HP for him to recall back home. Asterisk would now take this opportunity to knock down this turret in the middle lane. Oh. As for now, Kiwi stolen away the RWM, hoping that he'll be able to catch on to Jay. That was nasty! Bleed just got eliminated from the middle of the lane. I mean, they were... They, <laughs> there was a fight that they were uh, supposed to even take. I mean, look, FMM brought the fight to them, right? It was a really nice flicker to Minion and Fury into skill 1. It was perfect. They caught three people, four people, and then the follow-up from the Blazing Duet from the stolen uh, real world manipulation is... This flawless asterisk is on form, but there's a fight breaking down the mid. Aggressiveness but all the way down to the bottom lane. They really want the blood of bear, or can I say, the oil of bear, because he's the robot. Xbox, haha, moving on. <laughs> I can't believe that was the joke there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought you were gonna talk about bears, and then I was like, wait, wait, oil? Like I didn't understand. But then, then the Xbox. <laughs> Maybe I, I was like, okay, 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 just okay, 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 okay. Oil okay. of Xbox, yeah, yeah, yeah. and just oh, put the context was... there. Yeah. I'll do better. I'll do better. <laughs> be better. Be better. Be better. Be better. Holler. Be better. Why like this? <laughs> Okay, so going back into the game, uh, we see the Lord being sorted up already from JH. JH, you know, be, being actually to me, guys, JH, I'm calling it MVP so far. Uh, he's been well, really, it's really still good. very early. But yeah, but look, he's stolen the turtle. He's yeah. made the plays that uh, Astros need so far. If it's not JH, it's FMM. Okay, okay. We don't crown winners after the first quarter, right? Okay, I think that we still have a long way to go. JH can mess up. But I think it would be funny if he's wrong because. Anytime you're wrong, I always find it funny. <laughs> that is true. We see the Lord being sorted up right now, brought down to almost half HP. Bleed is really, really, is trying to get in, but they can't find the angle to enter. FMM is being the statue there, preventing Bleed from approaching forward. FMM looking for flicker angle. Oh yeah, but they have that push, which is kind of a, a difficult situation because they have so much vision from it, but gear gets on out of there. They, they scurry away all the cockroaches, so to speak. Battle spell economy as well as ultimate economies are all looking to find a dandy. It's all about who makes the first move and if whether the first move is even good. Kiwi start things off by dropping Jace all the way down to half HP. Here's HP not looking on oh, the great as well, but now the Lord is just going to be taken by the hands of JH. And Yon was hoping he would be able to go for the sidelines to try to take the Lord away. But now he's being in the middle of all three members. The fight is completely going to be mixed Ooh. up. As now Chu went in straight for the duel onto three other members, which unfortunately is not going to reap any rewards. But you know that's the problem, right? If a Claude can go into three members and chase people away, you know, that's a problem that Bleed can't have on their plate as of right now. Literally, 1v3 and you're able to chunk down three of the team members to like half HP. By the way, Jay popped RWM to try to chase uh, Chu away. So that's one more wasted ultimate. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot committed. I mean, okay, another thing that we need to do is I wish we could have a counter of Tagit News missed air balls of the final slash because he's had at least two maybe even three okay he ca he misses he gets the minion on the catapult so Sagi news really hasn't gotten too much value out of the final slashes throughout the entire game and i mean you really need to hit those to kind of start this fight like if you can get somebody pulled out you got a chance to really make something happen but they really haven't found that opening or that 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 nice Final Slash that carries three or four heroes. Yeah, unfortunately, Sekirnu is actually one of the main setup for the team. Yeah. It, it's very hard for me to imagine that they would want to completely rely on the Earth Shatter coming from here. Technically, yes, you can, but the zone is kind of small if we are talking about just Earth, purely Earth Shatter. Yeah, the zone is small and it's also really unreliable. I mean, there's a really good chunk of time that it takes for the Earth Shatter to actually hit, right? So, honestly speaking, look, um, 
I'm just going to count on our analyst uh, to count the number of error, uh, error slashes. Well, uh, as happen. the analyst here, I forgot my abacus, so <laughs> no, I mean, it's a little difficult. Hey, you're not point. you're not the only analyst, okay? That oh, we, oh, we've got oh, Kim Dofu, okay. you know, ah, over there. Ah, that guy, that's that guy, that analyst. Oh, the yeah. guy that's actually getting paid for it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, so we are actually putting a lot of pressure onto onto his shoulders right now. Yeah, kind of counting something on the, that he didn't the ask for, yeah. by the way. Kim Dofu, you have one job. Yeah, I mean. one job. Man. <laughs> Count the number of ass slashes. Um, but going into the game, we see. Good Lord's morning in about 50 seconds, but we see it's kind of like a Mexican standoff happening uh, right now as both teams are facing off each other in the jungle, uh, not revealing each other's presences, but both of them are grouped up as five. They kind of know where each other are currently at, right? Which is why they're not moving forward. Um, but it's still a kind of strange situation since there's no objectives. I love this. It's like a giant game of hide and seek. But nobody knows who's supposed to catch the other one. Okay, they, Jay goes out. He does spot him out with the orb. So they gotten something. But now Gear probably should make a beeline back to base here. Oh, was he just guarding the Fenrir? Sorry, what? Was he just, like, guarding the Fenrir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, they get in the end, so yay. Yeah, no, but it's... I mean, a huge amount... Uh, it's a big commitment from to have all five members to make sure that you get the Fenrir. I mean, bleed... Uh, right now, like, scrapping for scra uh, for anything at this point, right? Especially with this Lord that's about to be started here. And Yon, looking for that right jump in, isn't going to go for this one. Yeah, he's just going to do, like, a quick drive by, say hi to his friends over the Astros and come back, you know, because there's really no angle for opportunity. As we see the Lord dropping down to quarter HP. In the meantime, FMM did manage to get a very quick little spot on onto Gear. Well, Chu is just bringing down Gear's AP down to a small little amount. But we're going to be taking a look at the southern part of the fight. As we do have Yawn being taken away. Gear continues onto the oh. fight. He tries to go for the Primal Wrap. was hoping that a banning fight like will be able to get him his HP all the way back up. But that's not going to be working for him. Sekitnu, Seiji, and Jay. It's going to be the last three members remaining. But they're still going to be hovering around. It may not necessarily be the best idea. Because they don't really have much of a setup. They don't really have much of a way to bring down the Lord. As such, Sagitnu fed himself over to the wolves, and only then Jay and Seiju decided that it's time for them to bail. Why does Sagitnu even go back in? Yeah, I, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure. There was really no chance that he would do it. It's one of those where if one person dies, you know, you, know, you, have, you have a situation, situation where it's unwinnable. You just, you just can't go else. You gotta, you gotta split off, you gotta figure out, you gotta find some sort of farm. You know where they are, right? So that there's openings in the top lane, you have a chance. Right, but this is one of those things where it's like, ah, I still see people. Maybe I can make some sort of play, but when you're zero four one, you you really haven't found that right, you know, angle, so to speak. It's been very difficult for you. Yeah, look, I'm really, really confused. I mean, like I mentioned before, right? This is not the bleed that we used to see in the regular season. This feels almost like a, well, um, shade maybe thrown, but like a qualifier team. At yeah, point. yeah. I mean, and they can find you at such abstract. I mean. It, let them do so. Like, right? You're calling them out? I mean, it's what Abstract's gonna do, right? The final slash being used to secure the turret minion as well. Uh, so, honestly... <laughs> I haven't seen anything. <laughs> it's alright, Abstract. It, it, it's, it's okay, Holler. <laughs> right, I forgot. I, I, I'm Holler now. Alright, so back in the mid lane, again, a bit of a standoff. Like, this, this is a huge net worth lead, right, by Asterisk. They played this one perfectly. They've completely choked you out. You have no jungle. They have the Lord even pushing in the top lane. Asterisk are having, like, basically, oh, nice final slash there, but Chu gets back with the image. And uh, again, the top lane, uh, the top T3 has already been taken out. Asterisk pushing on all fronts at this point. Good thing that the final slash uh, cooldown is actually relatively fast. So even if that has been used just now uh, and being BMI the way, I think that that's not too big of a deal. In the meantime, here we have, we do have JH. Oh, oh. wait, take a look at that FMM! He did manage to go in for a pretty nice flick of jump. But when it comes down to Minowin's Fury, it didn't really quite connect onto much people. Oh, Bear! In the meantime, now Bear is just going to be stuck within the RWM. Immortality Pop, he still have his Fraga armor. And Chu went back in, but quickly BMI's out. Asterisk didn't even lose a single person and manages to take away all three of the inhibitor turrets. Not to mention that they are up 10.8k gold right now. Astro is having a phenomenal lead. It is <laughs> honestly slightly bonkers that this is only 17 minutes into the game, guys. 10 kills ahead as well. Astro is having complete map control. Yeah, nobody died in that last team fight, but all the T3s have been taken out. So bleed right now. A really difficult situation. They need to push things out. They need to fix the lanes. They need to push out all of the lanes so that they have a little bit of space. The next big objective, again, Lord in 20 seconds. 
Can Bleed get the steal? Are they able to do so? Again, they need to. You gotta find some sort of farm. This is probably gonna be the last potential Hail Mary play that they've got. Yeah, but I don't even think they can afford to make the play. I mean, look at the side of Bleed. Yawn isn't even at level 15 yet, so immediately JH gets the, the Retri advantage, right? Uh, not to mention that they also are 10k gold down. That's three. Four items maybe ahead that Asterisk is at currently. Um, and Sage, he's only at 111. Look at the items. Okay, thanks, thanks production for pulling up the items. We, only Roger, only Sage is at full item build right now. The rest of them, not even close. Yeah, it's not close yet, but this one is very precarious situation. Gear so oh. low. Guns get the air setter though. But it is not gonna go down in time soon. JH immediately abandoned the Lord, but quickly got himself back in right after his uh, energy eruption. Didn't really quite connect onto anyone. Lord's HP is slowly resetting, but it's still gonna be hovering right around the 20,000 HP mark. The rest of the members from Bleed, they're still trying to play a relatively slow game, and Asteris knows that this playing a slow game is actually gonna be uh, relatively good to them because they have way Minions pushing in from the top lane, the middle lane, so taking a fight right now is actually gonna be good! As such, Kiwi popping up with the RWM, Bleed, they are still gonna be focusing down to this fight. Yon is going to be going down, and Bear is still gonna be stuck within of the opponent's RWM. Quickly, the flicker away, immobilized, but he's gonna be A-OK. -okay. We do have Chu just gonna be popping right in with the blinking duet, but it didn't really quite connect onto anyone at all. We do have Jade just gonna be running back home to try to deal with the bulk of the minions. As such, Asterisk now do have the advantage in terms of the numbers, but FMM's HP is down, Chu's HP is down. So Bleed, they have managed to to reclimb themselves right out of this precarious position. They managed to defend their base and also managed to reset the Lord. Yeah. Wow, that, that actually went all in favor to get rid of Bleed, right? Bleed actually... Oh no, but guess what? Astros is back on the Lord. Um, honestly speaking, it's a little bit weird. Uh, they don't have the jungler with them, but I guess uh, Bleed as well does not have the jungler. Leon is going to be spawning back in two seconds though, so they do have the Retri... Uh, Yo, but... Asteris did the right thing. They understood the macro well enough. Yep, they knew yep, the top lane yep. and middle lane pushing it, and that was where they're gonna have to force the issue. But it kind of seems as though the micro during that team fight just wasn't, uh, just didn't cut it. You know, I fully agree with you. Macro makes perfect sense, but there's a fight breaking out. Lord. It does seem like we come down to the last insanity. We do have oh, to oh, just gonna be bursting into oblivion. Gear Dude. somehow manages to take the Lord away, and Bleed has managed to successfully take on the three core members of Asteris that is hoarding down to the Lord. Guys, that is huge. Look at the gold count right now. Asterisk is only up 2k gold. This was from a 10k gold advantage, right? So there's 8k gold already back into Bleed's pocket. Yes, Bleed are currently naked, right? They don't have a single turret left defending their base. But if this is their time to come back in the game, it's right now. Yeah, right now, I mean, it's all in. I mean, it's, it seems like the tipping point had happened, and the momentum is on Bleed's eSports side, but look at the top lane. That's definitely a potential weakness, but with all, like, three members right now, there's a potential fourth that might join the fray in the bottom lane, as Yawn had to go all the way back to base, but they do have that opening. The Lord charges in, they've opened it up, they've taken that bottom T3. The Lord have managed to successfully plunder everything that Asteris love all the way from the bottom lane. We still have a couple of tier 2 turrets that are standing tall in the top lane and the bottom lane. But speaking of top lane, we do have quite a lot of Mega Creeps just going to be pushing in. Bleed, not too sure whether they're going to answer to that. But for now, Bleed's main idea is going to be destroying the second tier defense turret in the middle lane. No, but this is, this is the point which, that we were talking about just now, right? This is how Bleed comes back into the game. Where all people, where all the winners and Attacks level 15, where the gold gap doesn't make that much of a difference anymore, uh, and it just makes it just comes down to the micro plays. Right now, bleed is up. By the way, 500 gold. This is a huge gold swing. Yeah, and it all comes back to that Lord fight. I mean. Yeah, like, you push it out, but you had Jay recall back to the base because he had to deal with the minions, and then you had a bit of an opening. It's one of those things where you were too aggressive. You didn't need to have been there. You didn't need to throw, so to speak. You're losing a lot of members on that one might have cost you the game, especially since the network lead is, like, shifted to bleed, but again, to your point, Kwasong, the network doesn't really matter at this point. Yeah, we're so late in the game. It's 22 minutes in the game currently, and honestly speaking, uh, gold does not matter. Most of the teams should be at full items. It'd be great if we could have the items on the screen. Uh, just to clarify that, perfect. 
Yeah, look, most of the most teams have their full items. If not, they have just half a component left uh, to build. So at this point in time, gold does not really make that big of a difference. It comes down to the actual micro plays for both teams. Okay, so your top and mid lane for Asterisk is going to push a little bit stronger just because you've taken out the T3s. You have... Those are the ones that you need to work work on. Bottom is like a bit of a wash in terms of where it's a tie, right? Uh, so it won't really push. So now Asterisk needs to use that as they prepare for this Lord fight, which is going to start in about five seconds. You need to ensure that those lanes are pushing. Maybe you have maybe Sagitnu who's dealing with the top lane right now. You have that opening to take a fight potentially five versus four because you need a numbers advantage. This is not something that you can win straight head on. Or maybe you can just with the just by outplaying, right? Um, but the Lord has been started from the side of Asterisk. They're currently at one quarter of its HP gone. So Gitan is still nowhere to be seen. But we do see True actually passing up to the top side. So that means that Asterisk does not have their marksman, their gold laner. That, that's just fine because Asterisk needs to know that hey, since Chu is in the top lane, we don't need a push for this. We don't need to push it strong. We don't like we don't have Chu, right? So seeing that Chu, ha I think he's been off the map. I don't know if Bleedy, Sp uh, Bleedy Sports spotted him out. He, this might be an opportunity where Bleed is like, hey, what is going on? I don't see Chu on the map. This is kind of scary. Do we go in for this Lord? Seiji. Oh, Seiji manages to escape perfectly. Fine. They spot, uh, Astra spots Sagitnu up top and they decide to commit, I think, a little bit for oh, the Lord. Go. Jumping on the gear as it realizes that the gear wanted to go over to the Z bush, but it doesn't seem like Astra did manage to take the full HP oh, down. Oh, they're gonna go! But now FMM flickers on forward. RWM is popped coming from the side of Kiwi. They didn't man really manage to call onto anyone except for Yon. As such, immortality popped. Change on RWM. Where is it going to follow through with the last insanity? But unfortunately, Here. both sides just not gonna be getting a single kill. Is all throughout stalemate as well. Both teams just squaring up to one another. These fights are getting closer and closer and closer. I am so happy that this is the first game of this series. Lads, we are in for a ride. Is it already 24 minutes in? Both teams are base have been on this lord for at least two minutes already. As we see a fight break out. Big jump on the Sakitnu. They still have immortality. The rest of Asterisk quickly backed off as it realizes that they are in a very big choke, a very small choke point. We do have the Yon just gonna be jumping onto one, but quickly just retreats. Oh, now he's oh. getting out! Spray Zone's Wrath! Kiwi takes oh. the Lord! Kiwi! What are you doing? As now we're just gonna be left to get to it, hoping that you will be able to just run it all through! Kiwi popped to the Immortality while Seiji oh, is in the middle of the fight! Clean he's up. just trying to get himself away! FMS sacrifices himself to make sure that Kiwi will be able to successfully run away! As such, Bear, Kiwi, and JH, the last three members remaining from the side of Asterisk, alongside with a Lord will now pants across the battlefield. Does Lord even matter if you're able to wipe out the entire uh, of Asterisk? Probably not, but luckily Asterisk manages to survive thanks to FMM giving out his life. They also have an enhanced Lord pushing down mid, but it seems like it's going to be quickly dealt with. Tough situation. This is a, like, a, a, as Asterisk where you're like, hey, we had a, you know, we, we could have potentially closed this game out. Now we're on the back foot. Yeah, we have the Lord. And they're go potentially going for like a concealed play, but they need to defend this T3. They need to survive. They need to clear the wave by time. Get Chu and FMM back in, which is 30 seconds. That's an eternity at this stage. An eternity indeed. We see top lane and bot lane pushing in towards Blade, but mid lane is oh. being shoved in. Bear having to use the last sanity to the last hit and to clear out the minion wave. But it seems like Asterisk is going to survive this onslaught. It's gonna be back to square one, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, but, like the 4K network league gone bleed way. All the, again, all you need to worry about where are the, where are the minions? Where are they pushing? Are you in danger? Then we can potentially do something. If we push it all out, we fix everything. We ensure that we're there. But Seiji, man, this guy has turned it on. He's found the right targets. He forced Chu to make some very uncomfortable plays. He doesn't want to image at times. He can't really go in with a blazing duet because he's being forced. And Seiji, even with the immortality, is it, it, just, you know, he's pouncing on you and he's basically, like, eating you up. Dude, it sounds like he's turning you on at this point, man. But, you know, uh, Seiji... Oh, oh, was it that obvious? <laughs> oh. uh, there's a reason why I'm sitting. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, what are we talking about? Seiji <laughs> uh, is really, really, really good. And this is, like I said, I sound like a broken record at this whole point in time, but Seiji is one of the premier gold laners. Yes, his performance was not as stellar yesterday as it was compared to the regular season, but he is currently popping off this game. 5.5 gold lead in favor to bleed at this point. And at this point of the game, 
it's gonna it's gonna show which team has the better macro plays, right? You talked a little bit about how the minions waves are pushing. We see Saginu in way, uh, mid lane trying to shove it up, but immediately a response from the side of Aster trying to group around, trying to potentially push out the mid wave a little bit more. Uh, but you can kind of already see an invisible line. Hey, if yeah. you look at the mini map at the top left hand corner of your screen, you can see like an invisible line being drawn off, and that's the boundary that Astros can't push forward. Oh my god, yeah, but look at this damage dealt. J, insane. What is that? 160,000. Oh my gosh. That's, That's almost double what Chu has. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Almost, almost. But, like, okay, I was questioning the Yves pick, but he clearly knows what's going on. He knows how to play it to the perfection. But his orbs and his real world manipulations have been on point. That's exactly what you want. Um, and it's been very difficult. Like, the zoning that he provides, J, has just been on point. But Sagitnu, going in for bear? Doesn't seem like they will be able to get a kill on bed that easily. He still have a lot of Faraga armor on himself. Yon finds onto JH, but it does seem like he's going to be actually pretty isolated. But the rest of the members from the side of Bleed, they are ready to come in and jump onto Asterisk whenever they find the opportunity to. But it doesn't seem like we have found that. Yo, 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 yo. Look at the top lane. Gear and Seiji sneaking up to the top lane. Do they push this one out? I mean, if, if Asterisk decides to commit for the Lord, there's a potential GG push that could happen in the top lane because there's two members. Seiji hits like a truck at this point. He would be able to clear it out. Yes, he's been spotted. Okay, it looks like Gear's going to make his way to the Lord at this point. They can't afford to do that, I feel. Honestly, this team fight is going to make or break the game if Asterisk manages to take the Lord or wipe out the rest of the members of Bleed. Seiji himself can't defend the base. They need to start grouping up as five as of this point in time. Yes, they got the top lane push, which is good and in favor. They also had the bot lane push and the mid lane push. So actually, all the lanes are being pushed in towards Asterisk's side of the base. Lord, uh, Bleed should have the slight advantage to draw this fight out for the Lord. Yeah, but Bleed has four immortalities right now. If <laughs> Asterisk decide to go in, it's going to be super messy. You need to ensure that you get the pick off. I would think that you maybe pop off some immortalities and get on out of there, but oh, Bear now. Bear. Perhaps Bear might actually lose the Faraga armor, or maybe not. Jonas HP is just dropping all the way down because of Chu. His damage is just pretty much crazy. So good news, though, has already lost his immortality all the way in the hearts of the enemies from here in Asterisk. The next one is going to be here. He's already lost bear. his firelights, but he's focusing all his damage down the Bear. Immortality pops, but he still has his Faraga armor. The Braze does rattle. Oh, Seiji! He's going to ready and tempt to not. Perhaps not. Chu with the Blazing Duet. He's just going to be blinding down on the gear as well as Jay, but he quickly BMIs himself right out of there. With two members from the side of Bleed taken down already, Asterisk is more than ready to hammer them down in a 5 versus 3 manner, with Jay Hit continuing on to a pursuit. He's not going to be giving Jay up just yet. Okay, Bleed had like, what, four immortalities? That's one way of Asterisk yep. dealing with that. He's definitely not, not going to give him up. He's not going to let anyone else down at this point in time. And now with the, with the drunken, unfortunately, Jay was not going to be able to get himself right out of there. Gear so doesn't have Phylax. He's just going to be fighting back on the Kiwi trying to get him some HP back up. But with that all said and done, it's Gear taken down. And Yon as well. The Asterisk marches down in the middle lane and brings the core down. That was such an epic game coming out from both sides. Yes, Bleed started off really, really, really shaky, but they looked as if they got their footing at the mid-game. Unfortunately, we're not able to close up the game. Congratulations to Asterisk for solidifying their position right now, had taking